today's video, I'm going to be talking about the best custom build video editing hardware. My goal in this video is to show you three different custom build systems that excel at video editing. There are two main reasons I like using custom build desktops for video editing. Reason number one, custom build desktops are almost always a better value. When you buy the components individually and build the computer yourself, you'll often get a lot better performance for the price versus buying a pre-built laptop or desktop from a manufacturer. Reason number two, I get to be very specific in selecting the individual components that have the features I want and need. Now I've been building custom computers for about 10 years now for myself, and the computer hardware industry has seen a lot of change during that time. There's been some exciting developments, especially in the last couple years, with some of the competitiveness between AMD and Intel, as well as AMD and Nvidia. Recently, I finished a new custom build for myself that is sitting behind me right now, but we'll talk more about that a little bit later on. So let's get started. Today I'll be featuring featuring three different custom build configurations that I recommend for video editing desktops. The first will be the budget build, the second will be the mid-level build, and the third will be the high performance build. Each of these configurations is designed with the concept of best value in mind. In this context, I define best value as the following, the highest performing components at the lowest price in order to accomplish the required video editing task in a reasonable amount of time. Having the right hardware for your specific video editing needs is very important. Having the right hardware sets you up for success and also saves you valuable time. After all, who wants to spend more hours on video editing than you have? To. There's nothing like that feeling of getting to the finished product and having the right hardware will help you get there quicker. Now one final note before we get into these builds. I have no loyalty to any specific hardware brand. I have used both AMD and Intel for CPUs over the years, and I have used both Nvidia and AMD for my GPUs. I've also used a wide variety of brands for RAM, hard drives, and cooling solutions. Certain hardware components do tend to be optimized for certain specific hardware and software needs. Where this is applicable, I will mention this. Let's get into the builds. First build is the budget build. The budget build is designed with 1080p editing in mind. It is also capable of doing light 2.7K and 4K editing. However, this build will excel with 1080p. The main trade-off for this build will be time. This build will take longer to render and export, especially with 2.7K and 4K. But with 1080p, this build will excel. So if you primarily do 1080p editing, this build is for you. The budget build rings in at a price of approximately $650 as of today. In a moment, you'll see the components listed that I recommend for this build, and I will also list them in the description below. Next, let's talk about the mid-level build. Now the mid-level build will easily handle 1080p, 2.7K, and 4K editing. This build will have significantly faster rendering and export times for 1080p, 2.7K, and 4K than the budget build. This mid-level build will cost approximately $1,700. Now that price tag may sound like a lot, but if you were to get a pre-built laptop that has the same performance, you would pay approximately $3,000. And if you were to get a pre-built desktop with this type of performance, you would pay approximately $2,500. In a moment, you'll see the components that I recommend for this build listed on the screen. And once again, they'll also be listed in the description below. Finally, let's talk about the high performance build. Now, when it comes to high performance, I am being reasonable in what I list here. Ultimately, if you wanted to, you could spend tens of thousands of dollars building the biggest, baddest, ultimate video editing machine. At the end of the day though, certain components reach a sweet spot. Once you've reached that sweet spot, you'll actually see diminishing returns or very minimal benefit beyond that. As editing software can only utilize hardware within certain confines, the high performance build is designed to handle anything 4K and below with complete 
complete ease, and it's even capable of handling some 6K and 8K editing tasks. This build will have even faster rendering and export times than the mid-level build, and it's much better for multitasking. You can easily work on multiple projects simultaneously on this machine, and you won't even notice the other projects are going on. With this machine, what you pay for components, you will be saving in time. The high performance build will cost you approximately $2,500, but what you get for that price tag is incredible. I'm going to list the components on the screen in a moment, and I'll also list them in the description below. Now before we take a look at my most recent computer build, I'd like to mention two more notes. Some of the components I listed for these builds are in very high demand right now. If you have built a computer recently or have been looking for hardware, you probably know about some of the limitations of some of the new AMD Ryzen CPUs, as well as some of the new NVIDIA RTX 3000 series graphics cards. Some of these components are extremely hard to find right now. These are expected to come into stock in the next couple months. However, in the meantime, for some of these high demand components, I have listed a comparable version of that component. Generally, this is gonna be a component that's one generation older. So this component will have a little bit less performance than the newest generation. In other words, if you're able to wait for that newer component, you're going to get a lot more for your money. But if you're not able to wait, the performance difference with video editing will probably be minimal. My other note relates to video editing software that you use. In my case, I primarily use Adobe Premiere Pro, but if you use DaVinci Resolve, it's important to note that DaVinci benefits much more from a more powerful GPU than Adobe does. If you're building a video editing computer and using DaVinci Resolve, it could be a good idea to get a more powerful GPU. Especially if you're doing the high performance build, I would recommend getting the NVIDIA RTX 3090 card for that. That's one of the most powerful consumer GPUs on the market right now, and it will give you incredible performance in DaVinci. For Adobe Premiere Pro, the 3080 is quite sufficient, and you will not see much benefit with the 3090. All right, let's take a look at my newest computer build. For my computer build, I use the following components. First of all, for my CPU, I use the AMD Ryzen 9 3950X. This CPU is a powerhouse. This packs 16 cores with 32 threads. This is about what Adobe can maximize as far as core and thread count. And let me tell you, with this thing overclocked, it is a beast. My render times for an hour long video at 4K take approximately eight minutes. And my export times with that footage at 100 megabits per second bitrate is about 20 minutes with it overclocked. I currently have it overclocked on all 16 cores at 4.2 gigahertz. The CPU is also great for multitasking. After I've done a video project and have it exporting, I can go through and edit some photos or create a time lapse. And I don't even know that video is exporting in the background. It's really quite incredible. My next key component is this Asus Tough Gaming X570 motherboard. This motherboard has a lot of great features on it, including two NVMe slots. And one of those slots has a cooler on it, which is where I put my main operating system drive. In the other slot, I have my scratch disk drive. This motherboard also features a uh, very rugged construction. Uh, it's got a lot of uh, heat dispersion on it. It has PCI Gen 4 support, and it also has Wi-Fi built into it. For my graphics card, I went with the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Super. Now yes, this graphics card is a couple years old, and if I could have waited for the 3080, I would have but unfortunately the 3080 has been very hard to come by for the last couple months. And the 2070 Super versus the 3080. In Premiere Pro, there's not a lot of difference. Uh, the 3080 would probably offer about 15 to 20% greater performance with the rendering, but unless I'm doing a massive project with a lot of effects, it really doesn't make a lot of time difference. And it's a beast of a card. It does great in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now for my main NVMe drive, I used a Western Digital Black one terabyte, and that's the drive that I have my OS on. For my secondary NVMe, I used one of the crucial one terabyte drives. These are very affordable and have a good performance to price point. For my power supply, I've got my EVGA Supernova 850 G3. This power supply comes with a 10 year warranty. And the reason I have the 850 watts is it makes my machine a little more upgrade proof. So if I want to upgrade to the 3080 later on, this power supply will be more than capable of handling that. This power supply is also modular, so you don't have to have any cables connected to it that you don't need. 
You only have to connect the cables that you do need. It makes for a lot less clutter inside your case. For my RAM, I use some G-Skill DDR4-3200 and I have 128 gigabytes of RAM in here. Now you might say that is a lot of RAM, and yes, it really is. But when I'm working with 4K and 6K projects, I've seen the RAM fill up to approximately 70 gigabytes before. And then if I'm multitasking with photo editing or time lapses or something else, I've gotten the RAM all the way up to 100 gigabytes of usage before. So I have that 128 because I like to do a lot of multitasking. If you're not gonna be doing multitasking and you're just gonna be video editing, 64 gigabytes of RAM is probably enough for you. Since I do overclocking, I have a pretty beefy water cooler in this machine. I have the Corsair H150i Pro, which packs three fans on the radiator and it's very good at cooling. I have it mounted on the top of my case so it pulls the hot air out through the top. Speaking of airflow, I also have a few uh, simple fans connected in here as well. Uh, these fans are near the side of the machine, so these pull in air, and then my radiator for water cooling pulls the air out of the top of the case. This creates a really good airflow, and I find that my components do not throttle. Uh, they're able to reach their maximum potential before any type of emergency cooling situation kicks in. And that's ideal when you're building a custom build. You want to get the maximum performance out of it, uh, before the hardware components start to throttle. So there you have it. Those are the components I put into my custom build. But let's go take a closer look at it. Forgot to mention, the case I use for this is one of the Leon Lee. I believe it's the O11. It's a really nice case. I like it. It's very heavy duty tempered glass and it's got that nice, uh, nice see-through look to it going on. The case is also very neat and clean on the inside. Uh, it's very easy to have great cable management. All the cables are able to be moved to the back. And the graphics card sits right there. And there you've got the water cooler over the CPU. You've got the four sticks of RAM right there. And there's the fans I was talking about right down along there that pull in the air. And then the radiator up here at the top is where the hot air is pulled out right along here. All right, so if you edit videos and you haven't built the custom build before, I highly encourage you to look into this. It may sound intimidating and scary, but it's actually not as hard as it might seem. A lot of the components are easier to work with these days than they used to be. It's a lot easier to build one now than it was for me 10 years ago. And a lot of them have safeguards in place, so if you do make a mistake, it's a little easier to recover without destroying a component. I will also mention most of these parts come with their own warranty. A lot of them have a three-year warranty. Uh, some have four, some have five, and some, like the power supply, go all the way up to 10. I've had to do a few warranty claims in the past, and most of these companies are great to work with. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them below. If you found this video to be helpful, please hit that thumbs up button. It really helps me a lot when you do. And if you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell so that you'll get notified each time I post a new video. I really appreciate your support. And until we talk again, happy video editing.